Welcome back to Aurora Tech Channel. Today, I will review the Orter Laser Master 3, which is more than just an upgrade from the previous model of the Laser Master 2 Pro. It actually came with a complete new design and many polished details. As you can see, the appearance of this machine is better than most desktop laser engravers on the market, which just come with four 20x20 20 20 aluminum extrusions to form the frame. Its hardware specifications are also pretty good. The maximum speed for engraving can reach 20,000 millimeters per minute. It came with a 10 watt laser module with a built-in air assist nozzle and the air tube connector on the top of the module. It supports Wi-Fi, which allows you to upload G-code files to the machine to start a job directly. And it also has a mobile app that can do some basic controls. It uses sensorless homing, and it has an extra connector for you to connect a rotary roller with a switch so you don't have to disconnect the Y-stepper motor when you add a roller. For safety measures, it has an emergency stop, a safety lock with keys, and the machine will stop when the machine drops or tilts at a certain angle. Everything looks pretty good to me. I would like to thank Made the Best for sending me this machine to review, and with that, let's get started. We have the front and rear frame, the left and right frame, the X-axis gantry, a 10 watt laser module, safety goggles, the manual, the power supply, and some tools. These goggles are pretty high quality, easy to see through, and can also be worn over my glasses. In the paper manual, which comes in many languages, there is a link and a QR code that can be used to access their full user manual. First, we will flip the frame upside down as the screws are tightened from the bottom. Start by sliding the Y motor cable through the left frame, which currently looks like the right frame because it's been flipped over. Then, secure it to the rear frame using one M4 by eight screw. Do the same to the other side. Now, slide the X axis gantry onto the left and right frames. Next, loop one end of the belt over the idler assembly inside the left side of the rear frame and insert the top part of the belt into the belt slot. Slide the other idler assembly into place and loop the belt over it. Using two screwdrivers, adjust the belt tension with the set screw and then secure the idler. Do the same to the other side. Then, compare the belt tensions on both sides and make sure they feel even. After that, secure the front frame to the left and right frames using the remaining two M4 by eight screws. Move the X axis gantry in all four directions to ensure that everything is working. Now let's install the laser module. Just slide it onto the gantry and secure it using a thumb screw. Flip the machine back and let's connect some cables, starting with the Y motor cable, then the main wire ribbon cable. Next, plug in the X motor cable. Connect the extended laser wire to the cable marked with L and then connect the other end of the wire to the laser module. To keep these cables from getting in the way, secure them to the side of the frame using a zip tie. Now, the laser wire won't get in the way. Finally, take the two M3 by six screws and fix them to these two holes on the inside of the left and right frames to work as end stops. This machine uses sensorless homing, so limit switches are not needed. The assembly is now finished. Plug in the power cord and screw on the Wi-Fi antenna. Twist the emergency button so it's on, turn on the machine, and let it home. Let's do some tests, starting with an engraving power test at 10,000 millimeters per minute that goes from 10% to 100% power. This will take about one minute and 55 seconds. As you can see, I'm not using my usual tent this time, which is because this machine is too long to fit under the tent. Instead, I'm just going to use a six inch fan duct to keep the smoke under control. The result is very impressive. With some laser modules, 10 to 40% can be too light to see when doing the power test. But here, you can actually see the difference in darkness from 10 all the way to 100% power. Up next, I will do a photo engraving test. 
I will use 10,000 millimeters per minute for speed and 100% for power. The result is not great and shows that the speed is definitely too low. This machine also claims to be able to engrave at 20,000 millimeters per minute, so go back to Lightburn and change the speed to 20,000. And let's try this again. This time, it turned out much better, and so this machine can definitely engrave at that speed. Following this, let's do a cutting test on 3mm plywood that goes from 100 up to 500mm per minute. This test will take 2 minutes and 34 seconds. Surprisingly, this machine ended up being able to cut the plywood at all speed and the edges are also clean. So let's speed things up for the same test and cut from 550 up to 1000 millimeters per minute. This test will take 1 minute and 4 seconds. It seems that the highest speed that this machine can cut through 3mm plywood is 650mm per minute, which is still pretty good. Let's try the same test on quarter inch poplar wood, which is 6.35mm. Here is the result, and only 75 and 100 millimeters per minute were successfully cut out. Let's cut a line to separate the test from the rest of the wood. This was a very clean cut, and the edges are also smooth. I will now connect the built-in air assist nozzle and air tube connector to an air pump to see if this can improve the cutting when I try the test again. I did have to move the fan duct a bit as the nozzle is now blowing the smoke around differently. This time, it was able to successfully cut the wood from 75 to 150 millimeters per minute. Compared to the earlier cutting, the edges are much cleaner. Closer up, you can see the improvement even more clearly. Then, I will try cutting half-inch poplar wood, which is 12.7 millimeters. I will cut a line through the wood. The first try was unsuccessful, although it did cut around 10 millimeters deep. So let's try doing two passes. This time, it was able to cut through pretty smoothly, and the result looks clean. After that, let's engrave a map of the United States. I will use 5,000 millimeters per minute to engrave the map and the words, and use 100 millimeters per minute to cut out an outline of the map shape. This will take just around 10 minutes to finish. Here is the result. The cutting is smooth, the engraving of the map is clear, and although the text is a little dark, and the edges are also smooth. The back of the map is clean as well, both because of the honeycomb bed and the air pump. Next, I will engrave this Batman logo on painted aluminum at 6,000 millimeters per minute. This will take 5 minutes and 23 seconds. The material may be too thin, so the corner started bending a little while engraving, but as it didn't seem too bad, I let the machine finish. The result looks very cool, and the bent corners did not interfere at all. This may be a great logo, but probably would not function very well as an actual outfit with the name written in big letters on his cape, considering that Batman is supposed to be the Dark Knight and sneak around in the shadows. I will now test out the rotary roller that came with the machine. 
This machine has a YRR cable, which stands for Y-axis rotary roller. So just connect that cable, flip the switch to YRR instead of Y motor, and you are all set. When you aren't using the roller, just unplug the cable and flip the switch back to Y motor. I will engrave on this water bottle, although I do need to raise the machine using four boxes so that it is tall enough for both the roller and the water bottle. I will engrave text at 3000 millimeters per minute, which will take nearly five minutes. The end result is nice. The text is very clear, and you can see the clean detail when you zoom in. Then, let's engrave this logo for our channel and double the speed to 6,000 millimeters per minute. This will take nine and a half minutes. As you can see, this turned out to be lighter than the text we engraved at 3000 millimeters per minute, but the words are still legible and the details all look good when you zoom closer. Let's talk about what I think of this machine, starting with the pros. One, the assembly is pretty straightforward. They have a very detailed video online that allows you to follow step by step while you're assembling. Two, this is a very high quality machine. The appearance is nice compared to other standard desktop laser engravers, and the details like the buttons, switches, belt location, and cable management are all well designed. 3. The frame is more than just 4 aluminum extrusions, so it is super rigid. I tested it at the top speed to engrave at 20,000 mm per minute with pretty good results. 4. It uses sensorless homing, so no limit switches are required. 5. The laser module is powerful, and it cuts faster than other 10 watt laser modules that I have tested. 6. The built-in air assist nozzle and air tube connector are handy. You can connect it to a laser cutting air pump or a regular aquarium pump. 7. It has an independent connector and a switch for the rotary roller, so you do not have to disconnect the Y motor and then connect the cable to the roller like other desktop laser machines. Eight. It supports Wi-Fi, so you can connect to it using a computer browser or the mobile app. It allows you to jog the machine, do some basic controls, and upload files to the SD card to start a job, which is all useful. You can use the Wi-Fi feature to start some jobs saved in the SD card, or use the mobile app to do some simple engraving. However, you do still need to go to the machine to set up your material. 9. It has an emergency button and a lock with keys, and the machine will also stop when it moves or is tilted at a certain angle. 10. Adjusting the focal length is easy. Just pull down the tool on the laser module. You don't have to find the acrylic plate or a metal cylinder to adjust the proper distance. Now for the cons. 1. The z-axis height is a little bit low, so working with taller materials is inconvenient. If you want to add a rotary roller, you need to use something to raise the machines. It has an optional upgrade kit with extension legs, but you need to purchase it separately. I just ended up using a few filament boxes as a temporary solution. 2. The micro SD card location is not that easy to access. The gap of the card slot is a little too wide, so you may drop the card into the enclosure, especially when you can't see the slot from the front. 3. It did not come with a paper assembly manual, so you need to open the PDF inside the SD card or go online for assembly instructions. In conclusion, I am very happy with this Orter Laser Master 3. It's a high-quality, well-polished desktop laser engraver. If you are looking for something more than just a standard 4 extrusion frame desktop laser engraver, you can definitely take a look at this machine. I put the link to this machine, as well as other accessories like the air pump, honeycomb bed, rotary roller, the 6-inch duct fan, as well as some 3D printed models I designed for the duct fan under the video description. That's it for this video. If you like this video, please do like and subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon to receive new video updates. I will see you next time.